I am more convinced than ever. You will not win anything with Martin Mayhew as your general manager. And in fact, I'll take it a step further. And I said this to you with the Sioux thing. If they don't make the playoffs and win a game this season, Martin Mayhew should be fired. Period. End of story. I have zero confidence in Martin Mayhew as the general manager of your football team. Zero. Even if there though... Was, if there was a negative rating, I would give him a negative rating. Well... We can't give him a negative. We Why? Get, at least, wait, 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 let's at least be in the positive because of the 11 and 5. No. It was, you can't give him a 1? It was fake. It was phony. Well, I know, but geez, Mike, look at, look at the How Lions, about though. How about this? It's not sustainable. When you go 11 and 5 and then you dive into the toilet like they always do, Terry, all we've talked I know, about. but Mike, stop, you're talking stop, about stop, a, stop. a negative number. Think yes. about that. Yeah, No, I won't think about it. His entire 2010 draft, flushed. I, I His understand His entire that. 2011 draft, flushed. Sue walking away for nothing, flushed. This offseason where this team has gotten precipitously worse and has not upgraded, flush. Mike, no. can you at least give no. him a two or a three? Nope. He's nope. made the playoffs nope. twice. I'm saying it's got to nope. at least be a positive nope. number. Stafford's contract, Calvin's contract, all leading to this team's cap situation, all leading to Sue not being able to be he, franchised. Flush. Uh, but I'm yeah. not doing it. I will not stand here and a, defend a this team. Negative, uh, no, no, no. I'm not asking you to defend. No, you no, are. No, no, wait, no, no. You no, are. Wait a minute. Mike, if we're walking down the street, right, right. and we see a woman who's homely, you at least give her a two. That's all I'm saying. You can't give them negative numbers, Mike. Okay, here's my point, though. Why jump up and argue it? Fine, I give them a one. There you go. That's fine, that's my guy. If a zero means you left your position unemployed, <laughs> I'll give him a one. Okay. And yeah, I mean, guys, I, I mean what I say. I'm offended by them. It offends my sensibilities. It's, it's not right. There's no transparency in these. None. I think any time you lose a quality player, especially in the short term, it's to your detriment. Next quote, I think in the long term, we're going to be glad we don't have that contract on our books. Then why the bleep did you go publicly for a calendar year and tell us how much you wanted to sign him? Tell me. That's what I want to know. Why did you not make an offer last year? Why did you, why did you shut down negotiations? Wait, Terry, I got something for you. Okay. I got a treat for you. He didn't want to negotiate because he thought it would risk being a distraction to the season. What was Sue going to do? Dig a hole and bury himself? Sue was playing for a contract regardless of whether you were negotiating or not. It has no bearing on what he would do on the field. He's a pro. He's an absolute professional. I mean, these comments are unbelievable. I couldn't say we misjudged anything about it with regard to the Sue negotiations. Are you out of your mind? The player walked out the door. You blew the ability to franchise him. You did that. You didn't trade him last year. You didn't make him the highest paid player last year. You shut negotiations down. You didn't bring Fairley back. You didn't draft Aaron Donald. You didn't misjudge a single thing. That's ridiculous. That's boulder dash. And for him to go out there and say it to these people who have won nothing. Nothing. It's insulting. It's an absolute insult, and I'm not going to let you defend it. I'm not defending it. You, you don't are. even listen to me. I am you not. You are. I'm simply telling you. Well, give you, him a one, Mike. Well, you, you should, because you gave damn Matt Mellon a two and a three. Oh, who listen, was worse? Listen. You didn't give him negative numbers, Fine. so you shouldn't give this man negative numbers. I give numbers. him a point five. That's all I'm they asking. They don't make the playoffs and win a playoff game. He should be fired. End of story. Oh. This morning, two kingdoms unite. The Chiefs Kingdom meets the United Kingdom at historic Wembley Stadium in Northwest London. We're in London, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Alex Smith held the keys to KC's kingdom. His 49-yard run was the game's longest play from scrimmage. Across the 45, Alex Smith still 40 in the Lions. Detroit was carved up like a kidney pie. Go, Alex, go! Go! Use that, Alex, use it, baby! Go, baby, go! Go, 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 go. Now they come on a reverse to the near side and a quick run! Touchdown! Kansas City! To Anthony Thomas! Somebody's got to make a play to get this thing turned around. Well, I'm going to hear me. 
Matthew Stafford was mashed by the bangers of Kansas City's defense. Let's go, oh! Let's go! A young chap named Sharkandrick made a big splash across the pond. Sharkandrick West, first at right side, 30, 25, 20, trying to outrun the Lions' secondaries all the way down to the 10. A 32-yard run for Sharkandrick West. Should have took your ass in the end zone and scored. Come up the sideline, hop and get your ass in the end zone. Alex Smith to throw over the middle. He wants back. He's got a touchdown. Kansas City. That was big time. That was big time. Big time. Big time. 53 werewolves just took over London. Right <laughs> From 7 Action News. Good afternoon. We're following the breaking news of the big shakeup in the front office of the Detroit Lions. Sources saying GM Martin Mayhew and President Tom Lewan have been fired. This comes I'm during a one in seven start. Let's listen in now. Lions give you a owner statement Chairman about Martha leadership Ford. changes our family has made today at the Lions. Earlier today, we informed Tom Lewan and Martin Mayhew that they may have been relieved of their responsibilities with the team. We thank them both for their many years of service to the team and to our family. We are very disappointed with the results of the season so far and believe a change in leadership was necessary. On an interim basis, Sheldon White will be acting general manager and will report directly to me. On the business side, Allison Mackey will be the interim COO and also report directly to me. I have informed Coach Caldwell of our decisions. Also, no, no changes have been made to our coaching staff. As of today, we are beginning a national research search for the best leadership to manage our team going forward. I want to assure our fans that we intend to identify and hire the very best leadership in order to produce a consistently winning football team. Our, our fans deserve a winning football team, and we will do everything possible to make it a reality. I also want to make clear that we have no intention of giving up on the season. We expect our team to compete, improve, and win. Thank you for your time today. You've been listening right there to the uh, Lions owner and chairman of the board, Martha Firestone Ford, making a quick statement, not taking any questions, although dozens of reporters in that room right there, announcing what we had heard throughout the day, early this afternoon, that General Manager Martin Mayhew and President Tom Lewand have been fired by the Lions organization after just a dismal one and seven start to this season. She mentioned that uh, Coach Jim Caldwell has been made aware of the decision. His future certainly still up in the air, but no mention of his future per se in the announcement that she just made here. Yeah! What? What's going on, niggas? Man, oh man, oh man. What a day. Man, just this season been crazy, man. God damn, this season been fucking crazy, man. Again, what's going on, y'all? Let me first off say, man, let me apologize for not releasing a video earlier this week, but, uh, your boy, that ace taker, had himself a little three-day vacation out in NoCal. Your boy was back home in the old baby, back in Oak Town, baby. Yep. With the bosses of the Raider Nation. That's where I was at. With my second favorite team in the NFL. The Oakland fucking Raiders. Who had finally turned the fucking corner. And I was there to witness. Sort of an early coming out party. Like a, you know, a little, a little glimpse of the Raiders take over the AFC. Because they back, baby. It's back to the Raiders glory days, man. Man, it been, been, been a little strong, you know, you know, 12 year period, man. You know, them AFC teams, they had a, you know, they had a little 12 year period to breathe away from the Raiders, but that shit over with now. 
That shit over with now. These fucking Raiders, they ain't playing. You know what I mean? They is back like a motherfucker right now. As long as nobody get hurt, the key motherfuckers. This team might just sneak into the playoffs as early as this fucking year. They might not even have to wait. But it, it all depends on this game. This is a huge game against the Steelers on Sunday, man. Against the Squealers of Pittsburgh, man. You know, that, that that's a big fucking game, man. And there's no reason to take Pittsburgh lightly. You know, you got Ben Ra Rapersberger. You know, he was, he was rusty last week. And I expect him to do very well. But the one key... No Le'Veon Bell, so it should be should be a good game, man. And hey, man, it's looking like the beginning of the end of Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh, man. So we put them down for the count. We put them Steelers down for the count, and the race is the race is on for that wild card spot, man. So we'll see. But um, let me tell you how things went with Oakland, man. While I went out there, man, uh, my buddy uh, Killer Mike he gave me a phone call. Um, Last sometime last Wednesday, asking me, man, uh, you know, hey, man, what what do you think of uh, getting your ass out to the Bay to go see the Raiders play the Jets on Sunday? And I was like, I had to think about it because, like, man, I, I usually work real hard around that time of the week, but I said, man, I'm gonna be working all I'm gonna be working all fucking November, man. So let me let me take a little breather away from work, you know. I thought about my head, and, and two things told me, get your ass to this game. Number one was the fact that I was not going to the Raiders game against the Lions. You know, I know the Raider Nation going to be up here in the, in the D on November 22nd, but I was, you know, I'm, I'm going to the Thanksgiving game that following Thursday, so there was no reason for the, for me to be at the, uh, at, the, at, four, at the den. Two times in one week, especially for this sorry ass Lions team. Hell no, I ain't for the watch them motherfuckers laugh in person two times. Even though I always had fun at the stadiums and shit, I ain't doing it, man. And plus, that's the only CBS game we got this year. And I love CBS's fucking coverage, man. Um, I want to watch that game at home. Like, I rewatched that Raiders game as soon as I got home. I got back home on Tuesday. I went out the. I went out to Oak Town on Saturday. Uh, spent sun all the Sunday, all the Monday out there, and it came back on Tuesday. And I just been working, so I, I, you know, I've been trying to get this Lions video out, but it was something telling me, man, it's meant for me to not release a video on Tuesday or Wednesday, man. Just take your time and wait for something to happen. And it is, I, I felt like something was gonna happen during this bad week, man. I said either Caldwell gonna get fired, or somebody else gonna get fired, man. It's gonna be another. Fucking firing, dude. And this one was actually a shocker. I'll get into that in a minute. Let me finish my Oakland story real quick. But, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, man, I, you know, I want to see the Lions against the Raiders on CBS, man, because I was watching that Raiders game and Rich Gannon, I love Rich Gannon's commentary. Dude is so fucking critical of teams. Like, he be honest as blunt, like, I hope we get Rich Gannon on this broadcast, man. Um, because the shit he probably got to say about Matthew Stafford in that game, Lion fans going to love that shit. There's the criticisms of Matthew Stafford, man. He, he tell it like it is, man. I mean, he ain't holding no water. Even though David Carr had, I mean, uh, Derek Carr had a really good game, he ain't holding no water against that nigga, man. He, he was critical of him at times, man. So I hope we get Rich Gannon for that game. But I don't care what CBS announced the team. They, they got great announcer teams over there. Fox got some shitty ass fucking coverage, man. I, I hate fucking watching the Lions on Fox, man. Fucking shit, man. Hey, I can't stand it, man. I can't stand Joe Buck. I can't stand a lot of them niggas at Fox, man. Fucking video quality sucks, man. But yeah, man. So I wasn't gonna go. You know, y'all know I'm going to the Thanksgiving game and. I'm probably going to end up going to that Packers game the following Thursday night, but I'm not sure just yet, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm just not fucking sure, man. I, I, I really don't fucking know. Honestly, right now, still, I don't know sometime Thanksgiving week, though, for sure, but right now, I'm just sort of like, just focused on the Thanksgiving game. I know that's the next game I'll be at, so, you know, that's the game I'm looking at right now. So, Anyways, uh, 
And uh, that game, actually, that Green Bay and Detroit game, that's actually on CBS uh, December 3rd. So that's why I'm kind of debating, too, because, you know, we'll see, you know what I'm saying? It's not just on NFL Network. That game is actually on CBS because that was expected to be a big ass late season matchup and we didn't hold our we didn't hold up our end of the bargain so it is what it is so motherfuckers gotta suffer watching the Lions nationally back to back Thursdays man fucking Thanksgiving and December the 3rd man fuck shit and I can't wait for that Sheagles game man oh my god I can't wait for that fucking game though man again but anyways man like like I said man the number two reason I ain't been. I always go to Oakland once a year for the Raiders games. I, the last time I went was last year when the Lions visited the Chargers. I mean, ah, when the Chargers visited the Raiders um, last year, I went to that. That was the last time I went there. I didn't go to no fucking game. This is my. This is the latest I've ever waited to go to an NFL game in any fucking season in the past. God no. God, they, I don't. I don't know because I. Man, I ain't, man, I ain't did that shit in a long time, like, stay at uh, home every fucking Sunday to watch football, dude. I ain't did that shit in a long fucking time. Waited this late to go to a fucking game. Um, but also, could be the last year the Raiders playing Oakland. I can't, I couldn't pass up on this opportunity because there was no guarantee Killer Mike and the boys was going, you know, they was going to have tickets for the, for the December games, man, you know. Even if the Raiders go to the playoffs, they're not winning the division, so they're going to be on the road in the playoffs. So, you know, I had to take this chance, man. Plus, I kind of like the way the Jets was looking this year defensively. I thought it was going to be a good game. I mean, the Raiders just blew their ass out, man. It was, Man, it was just awesome to be there, man. I mean, to be back in the old. I mean, them Raider fans was happy. It was sold out. It was just... They was it, it was it was it was good to be there, man. Because we've been suffering long enough as Raider fans, and it was just good to see everybody in the old doing their thing, man. The black hole on fire, everybody just celebrating, especially after the game. Boy, I had a really good time. I'm so glad Killer Mike asked me, man. I got good friends, man. I mean, they know I'm a substitute, like, cause I'll be coming from out of town. They know they can hit my phone up and just ask me, just just ask me. You know what I'm saying? They they know. They could just ask me and, and see if I'm going to these games, and, and there's a good chance I might and I might not, you know. And you know, I, I think that you know they they definitely, um, you know, for a fact, you know, know they can hit my line up and, and, and know we could do the damn thing. No, we could do the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up and, and see if I'm see if I'm a go. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, when I go to Lions games in Detroit, people take care of me up there, man. Lindsay Lasanti and her girls, they're going to take care of me up there, man. My boy, he going to take care of me up there, man. I got good friends, man. I mean, I've been, I've been blessed, man. I've been, I've been to almost every stadium in the league so far, man. I still have some stadiums I haven't visited, but I've been traveling all over this NFL the last 15, 20 years, man. I mean, I've seen so much, man. I've been, uh. I've, I've, I've seen it all. You got a question? I've seen it all, boy. I, I can tell you how the crowds are, who got the loudest crowds, which I think is Detroit. But, man, Oakland, they could get fucking loud. They was loud as fuck in this game. Like, it was just it was just good to be there, man. I mean, it was so cool, man. It was so laid back, too. Like, on Monday, I was just chilling. Got a chance to see some people I ain't seen in a minute. And I had a chance to rest, too. Um... Uh, you know, my, my boy Killer Mike, his brother, you know, he, uh, you know, he told me, man, whenever you're ready to get to the airport, man, I'm going to drive you uh, to the airport. You know what I'm saying? He took care of me. All I had to do, I had, all I had to do was just pay for my flight. Killer Mike took care of everything else, fed me everything. That whole fuck, he ain't pay, pay for my plane, uh, take it back home on Tuesday, man. I, I was blessed to, man, I, was just, I just feel so blessed right now, man. You know, it was just a good, good little mini vacation for me. Um, and it was unexpected, like I said, you know. Hey, if any of y'all that's listening to this, man, if y'all have not been to an NFL game outside of the NFC North division, man, man, get your ass out there, man. You know, 
life is short, man. Visit some of these stadiums, man. See some of the how these how these some of these other NFL teams roll, man. I mean, it, it's some good atmospheres out there, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing it for years now. I've been to a lot of stadiums. It's some fun ass. It's some fun ass people to be around. The only one that I would say put your horses, but I mean, you probably gonna get a lot of action, but. You might get a confrontation, especially if you wear another jersey. It's Philadelphia. I can't stand going there, though. I I'll tell you what. Philadelphia fucking shithole of, of the fucking league, man. I can't stand going to fucking Eagles games, man. Motherfuckers always got to pick with you. Motherfuckers always got to say some shit. Man, they just can't, like, man, you just can't walk in there with another jersey on. You, you gonna get fucking picked on, dog, like... You better be ready to put them dukes up, man, like, and have your homies backing you up. That's why I didn't go to the last Lions-Eagles game in the snow. I went to the year before that, in 2012, when we beat their ass. And that was our 4-12 season. I went there. And nobody fuck with me that day, but it was actually, this was weird. Let me, let me set up this story there. I'm going to get into the Lions. Let me set up this story real quick. Uh, three years ago. It was this female gang out in South Philly. You know, we was, um, you know, we uh, the people I was with was deep as hell. This is some people who I know from the East Coast from a while back. We all went to the gang. It was a mix of us. Like it was a, it wasn't just Lion fans. It was a lot of mix of other teams and shit. None of us had on Eagles jerseys. You know, we was all represent other teams. We had some Cowboy fans in our group, some Red Redskins, Giants, you name it. We probably had it in our group. It was a Lions game, so it was like three of us, and we were just walking. It was this large ass female gang of Italian bitches, and they was staring at us hard as fuck, like they wanted to fuck our ass up, man. You know, it was a mix of girls and guys, so you know, it wasn't like it was just all dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like they was ready to, they was talking shit. They was like, "Hey, you better not cross that line. You cross that line, we're gonna beat your fucking ass off." Um, it reminded me of, if y'all seen the Warriors before, if I could find that clip one week, I might play it at the end of one of my future videos this season. Um, there was a scene where, with the orphans, the orphan gang, right? This is the one where they met, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I forgot her name, but she was the one. She was the cute chick that was rolling around with him the whole time, the rest of the time, after they met up with her. She was like, y'all the, the terrific warriors, huh? The terrific warriors, huh? You know, <laughs> you know, yeah, that thick-ass New York accent. But anyways, in that scene, the orphans, they come out of, you know, they come out of the houses or whatever, and they be like, you see what you started, warriors? You can't cross our line. We gotta fuck you up, right? That wasn't exact words, but that's how it was. But, like, that's how that shit was. We crossed the line, right? We kept on walking. We was like, they know these fucking bitches, because it was only like six of them. Then, out of nowhere, these bitches just started popping up out of nowhere. I was like, damn, they get down. Like, they just started popping up out of stores and shit. You could tell they was in the game, because they all had the same colors and shit. They had on. You know, this was like. This was like. I believe October, so the weather was still kind of warm. So it was it was like a cool, brisky type day, you know. But they had on like these nice ass um, coach jackets, Letterman jackets, and they was coming out. And they was like, "If you take another step, we gonna beat your fucking ass and all this other shit." We was like, "Oh shit, they ain't playing no games." Like motherfuckers had guns and shit. I was like, damn, what's this, the real Lizzie's and shit? Like, damn, like, this was some scary ass shit. Like, I was actually scared because they, when I, when I saw, when I saw the bangers, I was like, you know, we don't need to take another step. That shit ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? Let's turn the fuck back around. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it was some, I mean, they was getting down. They was like, motherfuckers. If you want to walk another step, you got to take them jerseys off. You know what I'm saying? You ain't walking another step. In, in, they, you know, Eagles territory. You know, they was territorial as hell. Like, you know, you wasn't going to walk another step. And I was like, man, you know, I knew some of us in a group couldn't fight. Like, some of the motherfuckers in the group, you know, probably have a hard time trying to fight them off. So I was like, it was like, it was like 40 to 50 of them bitches. I was like, there's no way 
we're going to fight these motherfuckers off. So I just said, man, let's, you know, my boy, he just said, let's go back the other way. You know, let's go back the other way. But I said, after that, man, I said, fuck Philly. I'm not going back there for nothing, man. I was like, this shit just ain't even worth it, man. And then I heard about the dude after the game the following year. Um, when it was snowing out. Remember when that, the, 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 the snow game in Philly, man? Lions fan went. I heard a Lions fan went. They got his ass beat after the game. Trying to go on the train. Got his ass beat for wearing the Lions jersey. I was like, damn, man. I'm all fucking Philly, man. As a matter of fact, I got a video of a Giants fan getting, getting his ass beat a couple of weeks ago. And a Carolina fan, I'm going to add it into this video. I'm gonna, if I can remember, I'm going to add it in, at this point of the video right here. All right. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fuck up. Let's go to Seattle, baby! Let's go to Seattle! Let's go! We're the low seed, we go to Seattle. Let's go! Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? What? Why? Woo! Pussy ass, let's go! Smash it! Are you on the top or not? What if you are? Number one! Are you on the top Oh shit. Oh shit, nigga, world star. World star. <laughs> He's never won shit. What happened, He's dog? He's fucking mad at fucking shit. He's never fucking won shit, motherfucker. What is he saying? No, he's talking shit. He's talking mad shit. He's never fucking won anything. He's talking mad shit. He's talking mad shit. He's talking mad Alright man, let's get into these lions, man. I don't ramble on and shit. Y'all know how I do. Y'all know how I do. I'll ramble on, man. I ain't made a long as video a long time. So this one might be a little long, man. I got a lot of videos in this motherfucker, so it might be kinda long. And if you don't like it, fuck it. You know where to go. Get the fuck out of my video and turn the fuck around. Alright, let's go. Alright, so obviously y'all know Martha Ford. Uh been been just man martha ford ain't playing dog like martha is already not looking like her husband and the one of the things i kept on telling people was that just because these motherfuckers are in the ford family don't mean they got the same personalities like you know bill was somebody who he, you know bill senior was somebody who you know what i'm saying he was a real nice gentleman type dude kind of just let the organization do their job and shit 
But I was like, when Martha took over, I was like, she might run the team a little different. You never know. You know what I'm saying? Got to give her a chance. Like I said, we ain't seen her uh, from, you know, she's been here 18 months. We ain't really seen her from her just yet. Mainly because we went to the playoffs last year. And I knew if we slipped up this season, this was where Martha was probably going to have to test. This was, this was a test for Martha. Like, was you going to change shit in it? This organization is yours now. So, Martha, it's up to you to make these fucking changes. And, man, she stepped the fuck up today. Uh, actually, when I found out about it, uh, and it seemed like, man, I mean, y'all know my girl Lindsay Lasansi, the sports warehouse man on here on YouTube, man. You know, I heard my phone ring. It was, it was like, I heard my phone ring. And usually around that time, I get a lot of bullshit calls, like, um, telemarketers and shit like that. So I was like, oh, fuck another telemarketer call. And I looked, you know, I said, oh, man, that's Lizzie. Let's like, what she want. I said, I was like, you know, I was like, she probably um, want to see if I got back in town because I ain't talked to her since last week. And, uh, you know, I told her about my trip and everything. And I'm still going to go to this Thanksgiving game. Is you going to the Packers game? She still don't know. She's going to the Packers game in three weeks, in four weeks. So, you know, we'll see. But she called me and everything. And she said she was getting ready for work. And uh, she, she just gave me a funny story. She um uh, had the uh believe what she said she had did she said she heard something uh I think her roommate or something was knocking on her door or some shit like that and uh she couldn't really hear well knew because she had the water on and she was like well, like what the fuck she she thought it might have been like the motherfucker wanted to irritate her and just use the bathroom or some shit you know how motherfuckers do that like if you live with other motherfuckers they this is why this is why I live alone cause motherfuckers like to knock on your door and shit like that while you taking a shower and they like to oh I gotta use the bathroom huh? couldn't you did that before I went the fuck in there you know what I'm saying so but it wasn't for that it was some, for some good this time she was like her, her roommate was like it was like, Mark Mayhew and Tom Lamar got fired. And she was like, she she was so fucking shocked. She said her ass slipped out of the fucking shower. <laughs> it almost cracked her shit, but she was all right, though. I was like, damn, though. You know what I'm saying? That is, I probably would have did the same shit because that's some surprising shit. A lot of us live fans have been waiting on this firing for at least two years or more. At least about two. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of us been getting fed up this year, so even those that believe in Mayhew or Luan or something, man, you probably started turning your back on the motherfuckers this year. It's like we turned our back on Caldwell and the rest of his coaching staff. We want to see change. And when Lindsey gave, when Lindsey gave me that fucking news, man, I was like, yes, hallelujah, 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 amen. You know, I was like, dude. This has to be um, outside of the playoff berth win we had in 2011. The greatest day we've had as Zion fans in about 15 fucking years. Since 2001. Because the one link to that Matt Miller era is finally the fuck out of here. And it's Mark Mayhew. And even Tom Lamar was in that and connected to that shit too. Now, there's still some motherfuckers who's connected to this old regime and shit that we gotta get the fuck out of here, including the motherfucker that she promoted today. Not a big fan of that shit, but let's see what he can do. He's different, though, so I'm giving him a chance just like I gave Jim Balcuda a chance. He let me down, though, but I said, I'm, I'm not even putting that shit on Jim Balcuda, that Kansas City game. Uh, I'm putting that shit on Caldwell. I'm putting all these fucking losses on Caldwell because that motherfucker don't know how to coach for shit. And, um... You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, I was like, man, Martha going in on motherfucking with me and Liz was like joking about that shit. You know, we we was just we was just going in like like we was like, damn, but I was like, man, you gotta try to, to work, you know what I'm saying? So I hung up the phone. I immediately went to cause it was like it was getting to the point. I think, yeah, I think it was a little bit after Mike Valini came on. I was like, man, I gotta hear Mike Valini. And, and Terry Foster, see they thoughts, man. 
Sully and uh, Hackett, you know, Hackett man, Hatchet man, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hear what they got to say. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was it was fucking funny as hell, man. I said, man, this is going to be a great day. I got a chance to hear from some motherfuckers uh, that I usually don't listen to. This nigga named Pratt of Detroit. I heard his, I listened to his video. Uh, you know my man, Man Beast made his. Uh, NC 303 is here, but... I know motherfuckers was waiting on masks, man. I'm sorry I didn't deliver masks earlier, man, but I just was tied up, man. But, you know, I, I was I was just thrilled, man, because the thing that was scary and some touch and go was that there was a chance that all three of these motherfuckers, Caldwell, Mayhew, and Lawan, would have kept their jobs. And it was, it was not a certainty after the season if they was going to be gone, man. So for Martha to do that in season... I was like, damn, like, this is fucking amazing. Like, this is, like, Martha's nothing like a husband. I mean, these are some, these are some cold-ass firings she making in the past couple of weeks. Like, she ain't playing no games, you know what I'm saying? The hardest part, as always, is, is hiring the right motherfucker. It's so easy to fire a motherfucker, but you, it is so hard to find the right person. Now, we got some options out there and shit, you know Caldwell, guys, don't worry about Caldwell when he's going to be fired. I mean, I'd rather have him fired this season. And I think the main reason, like a lot of people have been saying, the reason why Terrell Austin hasn't got promoted yet because they don't feel like he's ready to be a coach. And I knew, I I had that feeling. I was even talking to my, one of my radio fans. He, he followed the Lions, too. He's not a Lions fan, but he follows the Lions because he knows I like the Lions. So, one of my boys up in Oak, Oak Town was telling me on Monday, he was like, look, man, because I was, I was like, man, I kept on listening for the news to see if Caldwell got fired. I was on that shit on Monday, dude. I said, man, this shit gonna be like Black Monday. I said, it, it, I'm gonna fire Caldwell today. When they ain't do it, he kept on telling me, like, dog, don't even worry about it. Because what it is, he said, man, Terrell Austin, the main motherfucker they gonna promote. And they don't feel like he ready to take over. And I was like, damn, you right, dog. I think that's what it is. They don't feel like Terrell Austin ready. Because if Terrell Austin was ready... If they felt like he was ready, I think he is ready, but if they felt like he was ready, which is what matters here, um, Terrell Austin, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Terrell Austin would have been promoted and Caldwell ass would have been fired this week. There's a good chance that I think it's going to be a week-by-week -week basis with fucking Caldwell. Like, I think that when they feel like like they're going to keep evaluating Terrell Austin, but if it gets to December, though, and... We're not winning games still. I'll just say fucking keep Caldwell until the end of the season. Like, the time to fire him is now, in my opinion. I don't like that waiting yet because, like, it's pointless. Like, I don't. it don't even matter who you got on the sidelines the last few games of the season. Like, it really don't. Like, but I'm pretty sure with the regime change that's coming up, Caldwell's a goner. He's, you don't got to worry about him being here next year. He's gone, man. Yesterday pretty much made it official that he's going to be gone at the end of the season. Now, there's still a chance that he'll be here. And I also think another thing, now my Oak Town guy did not say this, though. And this is the other one I thought. I think Martha Mayhew really liked Caldwell. I think she got a soft spot for this motherfucker. I mean, he is a gentleman. He's a gentleman type motherfucker, man. I mean, he probably been real good to her, man. Like, real sweet and shit. And I think he kind of got her tricked a little bit, but... If she gonna come down with that fucking knife. If she hasn't already last week when she forced him to fire the motherfucker, look, Martha. Look, look, I, I don't care. I don't care how much she like Caldwell. I think she gonna get mother rid of this motherfucker. But I, I feel like that also plays a little bit of a role, though. You know what I'm saying? Um. But yeah, um, now it's it, it's 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 gonna be fun this off season for the Lions, man, because it's gonna be a regime change. We're gonna see new motherfuckers get get hired. For the first half 15 years, we really get someone that's outside of the organization coming to take over the whole fucking franchise. Uh, because anytime you hire a new president, that is huge. And then the president hires the GM, GM hires the coach. So we're gonna be get we're gonna see a whole new team next year. I think there's a good chance too that this is the last season we might see Calvin Johnson and Stafford together on the field. I think at least one of them motherfuckers will be here next year in a Lions uniform, but I don't know. And there's still a chance they both will be here. Like I said, I, I wouldn't mind still seeing them here. The only reason to get rid of these motherfuckers is to get picks for them. 
and avoid the contract, um, the new contracts, to sign them and shit. Just get rid of them and get some value off of them while you, while you, while you got them. Because you can easily trade both for picks. I mean, Calvin Johnson, who won't want that motherfucker? I mean, but they didn't do it at the trade deadline, which tells me, you know, they might be using him as a merchandise figure or something, man. Look, I appreciate Calvin that he want to be here, but man, you need to win, dog. Like you, one of the greatest receivers of all time, and you need to fucking win, you, win yourself a ring. Even Jerry Rice did in San Francisco. He loved Eddie Bar uh, Bartolo, man. But that motherfucker tried to go get a ring, man. He tried to go get another ring. You know, he got he got his four rings out in San Fran, and you know he was trying to get another one with the Raiders. You know what I'm saying? He was still, you know, trying to get rings and shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like Barry Sanders, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, I mean, if he's here, what Lions fan is going to complain about Calvin Johnson being here? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But we can't trade. We can't trade. Now Stafford is someone who I'm not done with. Uh, I know a lot of people are, but I'm not done with Stafford just yet. Like to me, Stafford is a major part of the problem, but. Look, this is a motherfucker who has regressed uh, since 2011. Very, very rapidly every year. Uh, and I feel like he makes that offensive line look worse than what it... Look, that offensive line is pretty bad. And I think they're really missing Dominic Rayola because Dominic Rayola was a great leader on that damn line. And Swanson is not. But... In my opinion, I think Stafford has let his own self into a lot of space. Because we all know Stafford holds on to the ball way too fucking long. That's always been one of his fucking criticisms. He holds on to the ball way too fucking long. And, and that shit got to fucking change with him now. I would definitely like to see Stafford maybe be more similar to the 2013 season with a good offensive line. But he never had that running game though. Every time we run the football, and see, this is why I want Caldwell ass out of here. Because every time we run the fucking football, the offense be fucking clicking. And when he goes away from that shit, and we just pass, 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 the offense be fucking up. And I feel like the running game will work for Stafford. Now, I like Stafford. And I feel like he's, there's a chance that he could suffer here in Detroit and, and, he could probably be better somewhere else. Now it'll hurt as a Lions fan to see this motherfucker go anywhere. Cause man, if he like if he goes to Dallas or something, the only team that I will be okay with if he has success anywhere is Houston, because that's my third team. My third and final team. If he goes to Houston, I'm fine with that. But if he goes somewhere like Dallas, Denver, these motherfuckers that I don't like, these teams that I don't fucking like, I hate fucking Denver, I hate fucking Dallas. And some of these other teams that might go after him. I'm going to be so fucking heartbroken, man. If he ever wins a ring without us. That shit is going to hurt. I mentioned this in one of my videos a few weeks ago. Check that out if you didn't check it out. I mentioned that shit. That shit will fucking hurt. If Stafford has success anywhere else. That's why I'm so reluctant to get rid of this nigga. But I know we need to draft a quarterback. Now this ain't. Now, now let me say something right now, man. Because some of y'all motherfuckers been acting retarded. Talking about y'all want some of these quarterbacks coming out of the draft next year. Dude, this is not the year to go high on a fucking quarterback. Not at all. I don't even, I know for I know for Michigan college football fans, you've seen Connor Cook. He ain't worth the the time. Let somebody else get that take a risk on that nigga. Because I don't even know if he'll be as good as Kirk Cousins is. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker came up. He's a Spartan. You know what I'm saying? So chill down on that shit. You know what I'm saying? We got some really good quarterbacks like Josh Rosen out of UCLA coming out in the next two years. I like that kid Pat Mahomes from Texas, Texas Tech. But he is one of these running quarterbacks. I don't like... Look, most black quarterbacks, all they do is run and they can't pass. But if you could pass like a Warren Moore as a black quarterback, I'm fine with you. But miss me with that shit if you're black and you just run the fucking floor. I don't want no quarterback like that. Give me a white guy... We could just throw the fucking ball, all right? And he's a good game manager, and he could just fucking pass it. Now, in my opinion,
Stafford needs some competition in Detroit next year. Now you still draft the quarterback, you just don't go high on one. Because this is a, this this draft coming up is gonna be another good position draft. Like we don't even need the top fucking pick, alright? We don't even need the top fucking pick. Because Mark Cooper at number four is gonna be the best pick out of this fucking draft. Last year it was probably Aaron Donald. It's between Aaron Donald and o, um, Odell Bitchum Jr. You know what I'm saying? From last year. And those motherfuckers were picked out of the top 10. Outside of the top 10. And they were the two best of last year's draft. Most of the best players were not drafted number one. Most of these motherfuckers have been, been number one, especially lately, been fucking busts. Stafford, as the number one pick, it's all about how you view him. You, if you view him as a bust, that's your thing. It's not like an it's not like an overwhelming bust because he's go, he's taking his team to the playoffs two years. He's had some success here. He's had a lot of failure. He's had more failures than successes. But he's a motherfucker that I don't know if he falls into that bust category. A bust is someone who's straight up like a Ryan Leaf, Jamarcus Russell, and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up, didn't do shit the whole entire time as a number one pick. Um. You know what I'm saying? Because Stafford is not garbage. He's just an average to middle of the road quarterback. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of number one picks just been fucking garbage. So I want a position player. I want someone like a Joey Bosa at Ohio State. I want a position player. Preferably what I want, guys, in this fucking draft. And I'll get more into detail part in the offseason because I'm going to make a whole bunch of like, I'm planning on making a whole bunch of offseason videos because this is going to be a very good offseason for the fucking Lions. Like, I'm talking about not not good or, or just an interesting one. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make one about who we should draft and all that shit. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Also, staff evaluation video will be done at the end of the season. Uh, I was gonna make a Martin Mayhew one, but he got fired now, so I guess I ain't gotta make that one now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think we should go linebacker first. It, uh, some kind of difference maker, and we need a D tackle. We need a good D tackle. But I think we need the linebacker first because these linebackers are fucking trash that we got. We need to build this this linebacker core around DeAndre Levy. I still want to see Calvin Noy on that fucking field, though. I'm not ready to give him a Calvin Noy yet because I ain't seen him. How I'm going to judge someone I ain't really fucking seen in a regular season game getting a lot of defensive snaps, you know what I'm saying? I, won't, I haven't even seen this dude play a full game or start yet, so I don't want to judge Calvin Noy just yet what he could do. For all we know, he might be starting out because DeAndre Levy was not that good when he started here. I mean, the motherfucker almost was looking like a sorry-ass motherfucker. Then he turned it around, man. He, turned, he got better and better every fucking year. I noticed it. Well, as soon as he got that pick down in that Miami game in 2010, I was like, this motherfucker is coming. He's coming. You know, he's improving. But, um, yeah, we need to get a middle linebacker, dog. We need to get our Brian Erlacher in this motherfucker, man. We need to get... Because DeAndre Levy did so good. I actually want mine also if we get an outside linebacker like a pass rusher. Uh, Ezekiel Asa needs some help on that line. But we just need somebody who can cover the entire field. Now, if that's not Levy, he does have his hip injury. And his hip injury could be could be could could change his career a little bit where he's not that fucking fast. Um, so, I think we need to go get a middle linebacker. Um, definitely, too bad we ain't going to see Alex Carter this year because I definitely like to see him. I'm glad they played never lost it so we could see how the other corner, corners would play. Um, Slay, his confidence just been broken this season, you know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought Man Beast made a good point on that. By the way, I was going to make a video on all the draft class and what I thought about it, but man, Man Beast did a good job at that. I would pop, if I remember, I'm putting his link in the description box on that video that he made earlier today. Just listen to his shit for the evaluation of those draft class. I'm not going to do it because he did them perfectly and he did them funny as hell. And Man Beast style, you know what I'm saying? My man Double Limb. But, um, yeah. Um, I go defense. Also need another receiver because we obviously going to need Calvin's replacement. <laughs> Now you can draft a receiver now. Now you can draft a fucking receiver in the first round. And we need a lineman. We need an offensive line. But usually offensive linemen, as we see with Lake and Thompson when we got one in the first round, I think you could probably get them in the later rounds. So I don't think you need to draft them real high. But we need to start building that offensive line. We need to get we need to build that linebacking core. We need to get some more receivers. Um 
I probably go, man, it sucks that Zach Zander is gone, but I probably grab another running back. I'm not sure. Definitely need a quarterback in the later rounds. That kid from Memphis, who we put a lot of points on the board, I would look at him. Um, I don't know if he's coming out this year, though. It's, it's some quarterbacks that will be taken real low. I think that we could get some steals off of, man. Um, you know, um, we'll see. It's going to be interesting, though, what we do. Now, um, man, it's been a long this video already. Uh, now, as far as who we should hire, all right, Sean Payton is going to be hard to get. So, I've been thinking about Baltimore. I think, and I don't know what Ozzie Newsom contract situation is, but I think we should think about bringing in a package deal of Ozzie Newsom and John Harbaugh. If they fired John Harbaugh, I think we should bring them two motherfuckers in to run this organization. Ozzie Newsom is someone in the NFL that I could definitely trust. Ozzie Newsom, man, oh man, he did a good job building up that Baltimore Ravens team, man. <laughs> Ozzie Newsom has been awesome for building up that fucking team like that, dog. Like, no talk. Like, no, no shit. You know what I'm saying? Ozzie Newsom doing his thing, dog. I will probably bring those two motherfuckers in. I think the motherfucker that was running Denver, I bring him in. Anybody from New England you can bring in. It's a lot of motherfuckers. It's going to be interesting to see who they bring in. Because we definitely need an evaluator. I will have an evaluator to do the hiring too, for especially for the president and GM. Bring in a veteran, like bring just bring in somebody who got some experience to help Martha and these motherfuckers out make this decision. Because I'm telling you what, this 2016 off season is the most crucial to this franchise over the next ten years. It is so fucking crucial. You see. How it took Millen, the Millen era, 15 fucking years to finally get the fuck out of here. 15 fucking years. It's going to take probably another 10 to 15 if we fuck up in this regime change. Because this is the first time we're really, 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 really cleaning house since 2001. So, this is a critical fucking ass offseason. We got to hire them up. We got to be spot on with these fucking hires. You can always fuck up with the head coach, you know, you can always pick and choose with the motherfucker, but you cannot fuck up on the president and GM. No fucking way. We need our, those are the motherfuckers that's responsible for all of these decisions with the cat, free agents, and fucking draft picks, and, and the motherfuckers that we get off the street. We cannot fuck up here, man. We cannot do it. It is going to be so interesting, man, because Martha Ford has put down her foot. And she was letting Detroiters know today, Detroit Lion fans, all over the fucking nation and in the fucking world, that we are coming. We are fucking coming. You know, we, are, we, we, you know, I'm dead serious about changing this organization around. Now, that's the end of that. Let me just say one last thing before I get up out of here, man. Uh, let me say, uh, the London fans, uh, because I remember... Valenny, I think he bought this shit up on Wednesday. And he thought it was kind of fake that there were so many NFL fans wearing different jerseys in London. Now, I was skeptic about it. I was skeptic about that too. Now, I've been to England many times before. Out of I've been all over the world. England, Australia, the two countries I've been to the most. And also Amsterdam. I've been there a bunch of times too. But fucking England, I've been there so many fucking times, and I tell you what, a lot of them do like football, but a lot of them would diss the fuck out of football. A lot of them are like soccer fans to the fullest, but like I said, in fucking, you guys see, in fucking Toronto, y'all saw the Blue Jays rock, rock out, and, I, and, I, and I'm fucking disappointed I didn't go to a playoff game this year, by the way, too, because... Toronto is one of my two homes that I live in right now. That's one of my home cities. And I was not in Toronto the two to three weeks they was uh, 
the Blue Jays was um, doing anything, I would have went to a fucking game. And I was so fucking disappointed. But anyways, <laughs> they love the CFL up there in Canada. And I remember when the Bills was coming up there because I went to a Bills game too. I said, these motherfuckers, because this is the thing that the NFL got twisted up. Because they were trying to make the Bills the home team for Toronto. It's a lot more Lions fans in fucking Toronto than it is Bills fans, you know. Usually with Toronto fans that are Bills fans, they usually like going down to tailgate and shit in Orchard Park, New York. They like going down to Buffalo, all right? To, you give Toronto a fucking team, they will go bananas up here. I mean... They will support. Look at the fucking Raptors. Have you ever seen the Raptors have like an empty crowd? I mean, y'all see what they do with the Blue Jays. Um, you know, I ain't gonna count hockey because hockey is God up there. You know what I'm saying? Just like soccer is God in fucking England. And football is God here in the United States. But the thing is, like I said, just give those Londoners a fucking team. Because I don't like the fucking idea that they trying to use all 32 teams in that new deal that they just signed to play a game in London every year. So that means 16 games in London every fucking year. Taking a home game away. Because those home games are important. That extra home game might determine if a motherfucker make the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Taking home field advantage away from every fucking team. NFL, just give them a fucking team already. I feel like I feel like London. When London gets, it's it's like with anything in sports. Motherfuckers want the real product. They don't want the minor league product. I said one of the major reasons why soccer here isn't always supported outside of the World Cup because motherfuckers want the real shit. The biggest league. Biggest soccer league in the entire world is the Barclays Premier League or the English Premier League. I've always said the Major League Soccer needs to fucking merge with the Barclays Premier League. The motherfuckers want to see Manchester United and shit. They want those are the best players in the world. You know what I'm saying? And they want to see in the Spanish league too. But you don't need to merge that. Just merge these fucking leagues, man. And then you have a lot more success. The NFL, everybody knows the NFL product is not minor league. Like, when they had NFL Europe, motherfuckers knew that was minor league. That's why that shit didn't fucking work. Nobody want to see no minor league shit. Motherfuckers, just give them a real team. I guarantee Londoners will learn the game very quickly. And they'll support the shit out of that. You know what I'm saying? Only thing about London, they'll never be able to play night games. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing about them. You never see them motherfuckers on Sunday night football or Monday night football. They can't play. They probably can't even play past what the the late. They probably can't even play the late games either. So I don't know how they gonna do that. Well, yeah, man. That's that's my thoughts here. And uh, also uh, for soap soap fans, y'all know this is the. This weekend, going into the next week, it's the 50th anniversary of the Days of Our Last. I want to say congratulations to all of the people in the Days of Our Last community. 50th anniversary, man. That's pretty big. That's pretty special, man. Uh, so, down with that. All right, y'all. Let me get up out of here. Uh, peace. A good week. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna try to make a Packers Hate Week because it's the baddest week. Next, um, it's the baddest week. So I might make a Packers Hate Week video. And obviously, big Raiders game. I'm so ready. That's the ace taker bowl right there. You know, that's my that's my shit right there, dog. So, uh, get ready for the two games. So, let's see. It's gonna be interesting with the Lions. Now they made they made some some fires, but I'm a warn Lion fans right now before I go. Do not get your hopes up. This is, an because I tell you what, if the next regime do not do anything, I'm very convinced that this franchise is cursed and that it wasn't even Matt Millen or Mayhew's fucking fault why this team was failing. It was just a fucking Bobby Lane curse still in effect. <laughs> so I'm hoping we shake that shit off one day. All right? Like I say again, have a good weekend. And my girl, Yasmin, keep your head up.
You know, I know them I know them sea chicken fans are making fun of your ass. You know, I know you was crying at me about that shit. Oh my man, I'm getting tired of these motherfuckers. And shit, don't even worry about them. Don't even worry about them. Don't even worry about them, man. You know, they them motherfuckers they making it that far to playoffs anyways, uh, they they fucking done this year. Don't even worry about that shit. Just keep your head up. I'm gonna see you on Thanksgiving in person. I'm gonna give you some pointers then. Let me know where you wanna hang out. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be partying hard, man. So let me know what the deal is, alright? Alright, y'all. Have a good weekend. Have a good week next week if I don't talk to you guys on Sunday or Monday. Packers hate week. Let's get it. Peace. Mark the four, you awesome. End of JSRBC, it's that time again. Let's get it going. From Brick City to Oakland, one nation, silver and black. That's where we bleed. Let's go. Yeah. I'm hopping on the flight now. I'm on my way. E W R to O A K. In about five hours, I'll be hopping off the plane. Can you please take me to the Raider game? I need to see silver and a whole lot of black. It's Raider Nation and we don't know how to act. Speakers turned up loud, baby, let it bang. Let it bang. I need to see you at the yeah. Raider game. Raider Nation, yes. we just gotta kick it. kick it. I see you at the game, man. I just got a ticket. Got I'm flying out of Nook, so I be getting in time. For a five hour flight that land me three hours behind. Yes. My headphones knocking, Knock. plane tearing up the airway. You know what I'm rocking, all black and silver everything. Yes, Make it to the stadium, you can see me pacing. Long time coming, I couldn't wait to see the nation. Can't wait to see my Raiders. No. We ain't the team you wanna play. Uh -uh. Now ain't the fans envious. They know who truly run the base. They stay in the background, so they might as well. Hate. Enough about them, let's see what's popping at the tailgate yes. By the time the game starts, I'm screaming like an asshole yeah. And I got the hookup, I'm sitting in the black hole yes. Better yet standing, victory, I'ma see that At the rate of game, man, that's where you need to be at I'm hopping on the flight now, I'm on my way E-W-R to O-A-K In about five hours, I'll be hopping off the plane Can you please take me to the rate of game? I need to see silver and a whole lot of black Super fans, I'd rather hang with them instead. Predator Skull, Lady Andrea, the dead. Cannon Pain, Dr. Death, the fans are the finest. Dark Side Wonder Woman, rest in peace, pirate. Offense, defense, baby, we gotta show out. Opponents get no points, I need to see a blowout. Better yet, a shutout. Tell haters to butt out. Something like a coupon, competition get cut out. Taking over the West with the mark of the beast. We crushing all of them. Broncos, Chargers, and Chiefs. And our quarterback is mobile. And he could be the prophet, we know he could scramble, but let's keep him comfy in the pocket. I need to see the wide outs line up in the splits. I need to see the Raider Rats drop into a split. The nation is all in, it's a stadium wave. This what it be when you see us at the Raider game. I'm man. On flight now, I'm on my way. E W R to O A K. In about five hours, I'll be hopping off the plane. Can you please take me to the Raider game? I need to see silver and a whole lot of black. Raider Nation and we don't know how to act Speakers turned up loud, baby, let it bang I need to see you at the Raider game At the game, baby Raider Nation Yeah JSRBC Silver and Blacks, where we bleed, baby